This video was made possible by Patreons like Cody B. Thanks Cody. If you sign up now you can get an exclusive TLDR lanyard absolutely free. Find out more at the end of the video. You can argue about policy, ideology and political campaigns but when it comes down to it there's little more important than life expectancy. So let's take a look at the data, examine which country citizens live the longest and why people who die soonest do. For this video the data we're using comes from the December 2020 WHO data looking at how long a newborn child is expected to live for. The middle of the scale, 73.3 years, is the average global life expectancy which means all green countries are above the average and all red are below it. The country with the lowest life expectancy in the world is Lesotho where a child born today is expected to live until the age of 50.7. Also low on the list we have the Central African Republic, Somalia, Eswatini, Mozambique, Kiribati and Chad. The good news is that if you live anywhere else you can expect to live to at least 60. With life expectancies between 60 and 65 we have these countries, notably including Nigeria, Afghanistan, Haiti and the Republic of Congo. In the next grouping we have people who live between 65 and 69 years including South Africa, Papua New Guinea, Kenya and Ethiopia. Next we have between 69 and 73.3 years with this group containing Sudan, Myanmar, India, Egypt, North Korea, Syria and Russia. Above them living to between 73.3 and 76 we have countries including Vietnam, Bangladesh, Bulgaria, Latvia and Brazil. Then between 76 and 80 we find Mexico, the UAE, Iran, China, Poland, the US, Turkey and Peru. Finally, in the top group, those with life expectancies above 80, we find Greece, Denmark, the UK, Portugal, Germany, Ireland, New Zealand, Canada, France and then, in the top 10, Norway, Israel, Italy, Australia, Cyprus, Spain and Singapore. Third is South Korea with 83.3 years, Switzerland at 83.4 and at the top, Japan with an average life expectancy of 84.3, a significant lead. So this is how all of the countries compare and before we continue I'd like you to comment below on any countries which surprised you. Where are you from and did you expect to be higher or lower? One particular country of note is the US who came 40th despite being one of the world's richest and most influential countries. We actually did a deep dive on the US life expectancy on the TLDR US channel last week where we discussed why the US life expectancy is falling when other countries have seen a rise in life expectancy. That video is linked below. So what determines a country's life expectancy and why are these ones so low? Well there are basically three factors. Wealth, health and education. Essentially there are strong positive correlations between life expectancy and all three variables. More specifically there's a positive correlation between life expectancy and GDP, life expectancy in public health spending and life expectancy in a country's average education level. A quick methodological disclaimer, because these factors usually come together countries with higher GDPs tend to have better educated populations and spend more on healthcare, it's hard to isolate the impact of one individual factor. Essentially correlation doesn't imply causation so just keep that one in mind while watching the video. So let's start with wealth. The relationship between wealth and life expectancy was first described by Samuel Preston in 1975. He observed that increases in GDP per capita for poor countries entail massive increases in life expectancy but gains in life expectancy quickly start to slow once countries get a bit wealthier. In other words, there are diminishing returns to GDP per capita in terms of life expectancy. When these results are plotted on a graph you get this curve, which is known as the Preston curve. So let's see how this works when we look at the map. The map is the life expectancy one we showed you earlier and this one is GDP per capita. As you can see, wealthier countries tend to also have higher life expectancies but this relationship breaks down amongst the wealthiest countries. That there are diminishing returns to GDP in terms of life expectancy makes sense. Increased wealth allows people to buy better nutrition, medical services and security, all of which obviously improve life expectancy but past a certain point these things don't help you because there's an upper limit to how old you can get no matter how wealthy you are. Yep, even Jeff. So that's wealth. Let's talk about health. 
As you might expect, increases in public health expenditure are positively correlated with increase in life expectancy. This is why Spain has a higher life expectancy than the Czech Republic. Despite having similar GDP per capita, Spain spends about 9% of GDP on healthcare, whereas the Czech Republic spends about 7.5%, which goes some way to explain why Spain's life expectancy is 83.2, whereas the Czechs can expect to live to 79.2. Again, that there are diminishing returns on life expectancy is down to much the same reasons as before. Increases in public health spending mean better vaccine programmes, better antibiotics and antivirals, and better treatment for stuff like cardiovascular disease and cancer, which all makes a massive difference to life expectancy. Past a certain point though, there's not much more that a public health service can do. And again, you can see this when you compare a map of healthcare spending against a map of life expectancy. The notable outlier when it comes to healthcare spending is the US. The US spends nearly twice as much as any other developed country on healthcare spending, but had a pre-COVID life expectancy of just 78.7 in 2018. For context, the UK had a life expectancy of 81.2 in 2018, France 82.7 and Spain 83.2. If you want to know more about the US's anomalously low life expectancy, go watch our video on it. Alright, on to the last one, education. Again, there's a positive correlation between life expectancy and education. Now, you might be thinking that this is somewhat unsurprising, because, well, better educated people get paid more, and wealth helps you live longer. And while this is true, what's interesting is that education is actually a better predictor of life expectancy than wealth, according to a paper by Wolfgang Lutz, published in the Population and Development Review in 2018. Compare Vietnam and Nigeria, for example. While Nigeria's GDP per capita is around $5,000, its life expectancy is just 54 years. For context, Vietnam has a slightly higher GDP per capita of $7,000, but a far higher life expectancy of 76. Nigeria has one of the worst education systems in the world. Nigeria spends just 8% of its budget on education, 30% of Nigerians are illiterate, and 10 million children are out of school, the highest number in the world. Vietnam, on the other hand, spends 20% of its budget on education, which means high primary school completion rates, strong gender parity, low student-teacher ratios, and a low out-of-school rate. So, why is education such a good predictor of life expectancy? Well, this could be for a couple of reasons. First, education can raise IQ levels, with every extra year of education translating into a 1 to 5 point increase in IQ, and people with high IQs tend to live longer. Lutz speculated that literacy and education in general improve executive functioning and cognitive abilities, which translate into better life choices. Whatever the precise mechanism, the point is that education is actually a surprisingly good indicator of life expectancy. So, those are the three main determinants of life expectancy, and hopefully it goes some of the way to explain this map, and why some countries are able to help their citizens live much longer than others. If you like this video, then we have a whole bunch of map videos, and the playlist of them all is linked below. As I said at the start of the video, we're running a Patreon promotion whereby every Patreon paying more than $5 a month can get an absolutely free, never for sale lanyard. To claim yours, just sign up to the TLDR Patreon, and then click the link to the store. Signing up not only snags you a lanyard, but also gets you other perks like early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts, and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.